Hello everyone, I'm Christy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So with the school year basically wrapping up and summer about to start, I thought that this was the time when some of the juniors start their college application process. And being someone who just went through the college application process herself, I wanted to share some of the tips and some of the advice that I learned through this process to help make things go smoother for you all. So yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so I made a whole list of everything I wanted to share with you guys today. But one of the first things is that you should definitely start writing your college applications early, um, starting with your Common App. And I think oftentimes people tell you to start early, but they don't really tell you why. And then there's two main reasons, I guess. One is, of course, you want to like, you don't want to wait to the last minute. You don't want to procrastinate. You don't want to whip up an essay a day before it's due because like, obviously you can't turn in the best version of the essay a day before. But another reason is also because in the beginning, when you start writing these essays about yourself, your experiences, um, everything you learned, you don't really get the style of writing these essays. But as you write more and more, you start gaining that experience and realizing how to shape these essays or write these college essays. And then with that time, let's say like an essay is due in November and you start writing it in July, you have all that time and all that experience that you gain and you can go back and edit it before it's due to make it better because you've had all this experience writing all these essays in the middle. And then, um, like I mentioned before, the Common App is one of the most important essays because this is an essay that goes to a lot of the privates and a lot of schools in general. So refine that essay the most because this one is truly important and it's kind of like the massive essay, 650 words, that tells the college who you are in the beginning, kind of introduces your character and all of that stuff. This kind of goes hand in hand with starting early, but remember not to procrastinate. And a way that I learned to do this was to make a schedule for yourself. So set a deadline in like, I don't know, three days, you'll have a draft for this specific school done. And then next week, you'll have another draft of it done. And then whichever week or whichever day, you'll have it finalized. Setting those deadlines for yourself helps to keep yourself accountable and it does help you keep track of all the essays you're writing and if you're finishing these essays on time. For me, I start early because like when a lot of things uh, pile up and then it's close to the due date, I tend to get really stressed and I didn't want to put that on myself. So I started really early and then I kind of just worked my way through each school, took one school at a time and then just, I, I don't know, that was the process that worked for me. I think one of the most important things about starting early is also the fact that the most difficult part is actually beginning to write. So once you begin to write and have that first draft done, you basically have all this, I guess, energy inside of you that wants that that like pushes you to edit it and then refine it because the most difficult part is usually just starting it. So once you start and just get your ideas down, get a draft down, it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be the best, it can have a bunch of errors in it, but just getting that first version down is like extremely important and it does help you move the process along. Remember to use your time wisely. So like for me, first semester, um, I had volleyball. So that was like three hours of practice every day. I had games, um, I had college applications. It was like new classes, the classes, I don't know why, but my school senior year, they gave a lot of homework. So like I had to balance all of that. So sometimes before games, like when I was waiting for JV to finish, or if I was like refing a game, I would just on the side, kind of write down some ideas about what I wanted to talk about for a specific school and their essays. So yeah, use your time wisely because it is important that you finish these on time and give yourself time to refine these essays. By the way, these tips and advice aren't just from me, they're also from one of my best friends, Phoebe. I absolutely love her and she helped me come up with some of the ideas of what to tell you guys in this video. Okay, so next, this is something both me and Phoebe did to keep ourselves accountable during this application season. But we both made a doc and a spreadsheet to track the colleges we were applying to and the due dates. So for me, I had an entire folder dedicated to college apps. Um, the two main, I guess, things that I always used were I made a spreadsheet that had basically all my information. It had the links to the college portal, so like the Common App, uh, the UCs, any other portal that any other school used. They had all my passwords, my usernames, um, and then they had all of my tests, the date, the subscore I got, the score I got. Um, it also had all of my extracurriculars. So it was divided by like volunteer jobs, awards and honors, um, extracurriculars, college courses, so that I could easily see what exactly my extracurriculars are and from what section because on the application you are going to have to define what that um, activity is. 
So I had all of that sorted out. And then I also had all the colleges and then the due dates, plus a little, I didn't really use this, but like I did write down each of their like separate supplement prompts. Um, I don't know why, cause I ended up making another sheet. So the, the other part is um, I made a Google doc and I wrote all of my college essays there. That one got a little bit thick. <laughs> so it's personal preference on whether you wanna compile all of your essays onto one doc or separately. I had all my essays on one doc and at the top of the doc, I basically had columns where it had the school in one column, then the separate essay prompts in the second column. And the third column was for me to either make it yellow for drafting, uh, red for urgently, I need to write this, like I need to write a draft of it, or green, it's done and it's finalized and I can paste it into the Common app. And then um, one of the other things, I keep looking down because my computer is here because I'm referencing um, my sheets, but for the spreadsheet that I made with all my extracurriculars, I also had a box where I wrote some details about what I did, um, the grades I participated in that activity, the hours per week and the weeks per year, because on the Common App, it does ask you to list these specific things. So for me, it was just easier to have all the information in one place so I could easily transfer it when the Common App opened. It's honestly pretty tedious to like make these spreadsheets and these docs in the beginning but it does really help you um track all your information keep it compiled in one place so it's like so if you urgently need it you can easily find it and yeah it does help towards the end so in the beginning it's hard work but it does help <laughs> the next part is essays so as you guys know there's the common app that you submit to almost every school but not all of them and then each school also requires supplements so these supplements, there's there's a lot of supplements. Like you don't realize how many supplements there are until the end of your college application season and you count up all the essays you wrote. But in a way, it does help you, like I mentioned earlier, practice your writing and kind of get the hang of how to write these college essays. So one of the main things is that you are allowed to recycle essays. Um, what I mean by that is if two colleges have really similar prompts, so like the one where they ask, what is an activity that you did that positively impacted the community? Those types of prompts, you can take an essay you already wrote and just put it to another school and maybe like change the word count because oftentimes the schools have different word counts for their essays. But also, um, I honestly suggest not to recycle the essays that ask, why do you want to go to this specific school? Because for example, for NYU, their only supplement this year was why do you want to go to NYU? And it was like 400 words. And then that essay like really counted towards your application, I guess. They really wanted to know why you wanted to go to that school. And then if you just take an essay from like, I guess, if you just take an essay from Northeastern and you copy and paste it, put it on NYU, change the name, like they can tell that you don't actually know enough about the school. You don't actually want to go. So basically submitting the application would have been a waste. So like don't recycle the essays where they ask, why do you want to go to this specific school? And then a lot of the supplements, like obviously I can't tell you what to write, but there's a lot of resources online. So if you search up how to write the supplement essay for Babson College, they'll give you some advice like um, College Vine, Prep Scholar, College Essay Advisor. They all give advice on what the admissions teams wants to see for these specific schools. And then um, another thing I think for essays was helpful for me. Um, sometimes discussing your essay ideas with your friends actually helps because they often give you like a different insight that you could add into your essay that you never thought about. Friends can also help you like cut down your essay because for me, I always overwrote by a lot. And then towards the end, I would always need help cutting. So my friends were always able to help me cut down and then meet the word count. One of the most important things that people always told me when I wrote my essays was show, don't tell. Honestly, I never really understood what that meant, but I get it now. It's basically saying that you want to explain how you felt, explain your experiences, and don't just tell them like, I felt happy because I won this award. Like, like tell them how it came to be, all the work that you put them, show them the process that you went through to get this specific award. And then last, and honestly, this is like one of the most important things is you personally have to love your essays. Like when you start writing, you'll understand what I mean, but there are essays where I would be like, wow, this is like, this is a great essay. I love it. And I am so proud to submit it. And there's essays where it's like, I'm so glad I got this done with and it's over. I don't have to write this supplement for the school anymore. And then honestly, like 
you see the outcome like the outcome is different for each school there was one school that i didn't really work hard on their supplements i was kind of just like oh i want to get this over with i'll just write it this essay isn't that many words it's only 250 there's two of them i just want to get it over with let me just turn it in and i turned in did not get in <laughs> and then there's another school that's around the same like um level i guess or like difficulty of getting in and I submitted three essays to that specific school and I really, really love those essays and I actually did get in. So like, it is really important for you to love your essays because the admissions team that's reading it can tell when you truly are like taking the time to write the essays for that specific school. My throat is so dry. Okay. Now on to one of the biggest parts of the college application season, which is basically choosing the schools that you want to apply to. So people always say that it's really important to find a balance and honestly, it really, really is. Um, I think for me, I applied to 20 schools and I actually think that was a bit much. Um, I think a good range is maybe 10 to 15. And then if you do go with the 10 to 15 range, maybe I guess three to four safeties, um, five targets, five reaches, I, like, yeah, what honestly, whatever schools you want to apply to. But for me, I think that's a pretty good balance between um, the different tiers that you want to apply to. For me, everyone kept telling me to research the school, and I'm not going to lie, I never really did it um, because, like, I don't know, I was, I was kind of lazy. <laughs> but I think research is overall a bit um, very important. And, like, when I say research, I think the reason why I got lazy was like when I heard research all I could think about was like go on their website and look at the school and that that honestly brought me nothing because you can't you can't get a sense of the school through the words on their website so I would suggest that if you can do go visit um you get when you visit you get a vibe of the school you get a vibe of the students there how they communicate with each other how they do their work you can also talk to students that already go there because they're able to give you more of a student view of what the school is actually like. There's also websites like Unigo where the students answer questions about the social scene, um, the stereotypes on campus and all of that. And I actually used Unigo. I thought it was really good and it did give me more information about each of the schools. So yeah, I definitely suggest checking that out. I think one of the things is that when you are choosing um, the safeties, the target, the reach schools, don't choose safeties that you wouldn't go to. And I know, of course, everyone wants to get into their reach schools, they want to go, but we're talking about like worst case scenario, you don't get into any of the targets or reaches and you have all these safeties left and you got into all those safeties. Make sure you choose schools that you will be happy going to and that you will fit in with the community. You will love that school because there's always that possibility. And it's like, why would you apply to a school that you wouldn't want to go to in the first place? Because like getting in wouldn't make a difference for you. It wouldn't impact you. And you're kind of taking away one of the spots that maybe a student who really, really wanted to go to that school could have taken. And then, like I mentioned before, when the schools ask you, why do you want to go to that specific school? Make sure you know exactly why you want to go to that school. Is it for their specific research program? Is it for their specific connections to a specific company or any of that? Colleges want to see that you are very invested in their school and they want to see that you have that dedication to go there and like make a difference and one of the things that phoebe mentioned was that at our school we have a college and career center and there's this really sweet lady who works there miss amick who was able to provide us with a lot of information um if your school does have a college and career center underestimate all the resources they have for us um towards the beginning of the school year we would have college tours where the college one of the college admissions officers would come to our school they give us brochures help answer our questions give us more information about the school and like just don't underestimate all the resources that your school has because there actually are a lot of ways that they can help you a lot Another thing about the process is that if you are applying to a school that requires recommendation letters, remember to reach out to those teachers early because teachers are humans too. They're just like us. Um, they don't want to wait till the last minute to write these letters because they do impact their student applications. So they want to make sure that they're providing us with the best recommendation letter that they can. So make sure to tell them early so that they can get started early. And a lot of the times these teachers um, have questionnaires that they want you to fill out so that they gain a better perspective of who you are as a person, what you want to pursue, all the things you've done, because of course they can't know like what you like spent the summer doing, what, where you volunteered at. So 
filling out these questionnaires helps them write more about who you are in the recommendation letter. So just let them know early. Um, for me, I asked my teachers at the end of junior year. I know some of you guys, um, school has already ended, so that's not really possible, but um, ask them when your senior year starts. Do not bombard them on the first day of school and be like, hey, write my rec letter because they're already stressed. It's the first day of school. Wait like a couple good days, but don't wait too long or all the spaces are going to be filled up. And yeah, don't email them either. Like teachers want you to ask them for recommendation letters in real life. And don't forget to give them a thank you note after all of this. <laughs> and of course, when you are done with all these applications, it's December, it's December break, just relax. You already spent the past four months working really hard, writing all these essays, balancing schoolwork, and like any other extracurriculars that you guys do. Just relax and enjoy and breathe because nothing is in your hands anymore. So all you can do is trust the process, believe everything will go well, everything's already been set, and just yeah, don't, don't stress yourself over something that you can't physically change at that time because first of all, it's bad for your health. Second of all, there's just like nothing you can do in that case. So just relax and be proud of all you've accomplished these past four years. And of course, enjoy second semester senior year because I'm stuck in quarantine right now. So enjoy it for me, but no, I'm doing okay. Um, and when decisions does come around during March, it's a load of emotions. Like I feel like there's a different set of emotions that should just be dedicated to how seniors feel when they get their decisions back, but it is okay. Okay. It is okay. If you don't get into that top school that you applied to, it's okay if you don't get into your dream school because oftentimes people go to schools they never would have put as their first choice, but they end up doing so well there and just thriving and then coming out and being so successful. And that just goes to show that like, you do not need to go to a top tier school in Ivy or any of the top 10 schools to be successful, to be happy in the future, to be anything. You just have to go somewhere and do your best and then be who you are uh, make the most of every day and honestly you'll just thrive looking at the decisions in a more positive light i guess if a school does not accept you in a way the admissions team does know which type of students will be the best at their specific school so if you don't get into that specific school maybe that just means that you will be so much better you will thrive so much more at a different school and yeah just believe that wherever you go, you will be okay, you will be happy, you will be successful. Don't let the fact that you don't get into three out of four of your reaches drag you down. It does not mean that you're not good enough at all. There's so many different things that go into an application when schools are considering applicants that are just not in your control. A school acceptance does not define your worth. Don't let it consume you. Try to find the joy of the simple acceptances. And yeah, that's just some of the tips and advice that I wanted to share with you guys before your college application season. I know you guys are all spectacular human beings who have done amazing things, who are gonna go so far in life and be so successful and so happy. Best of luck. Um, I hope this video did help you guys, give you guys a little bit more information. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe down below, give it a thumbs up and leave some comments telling me how your college application season went. Yeah, um, I love you all and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.